Welcome to Worship Online with Word of Life. I'm Patty Mitchkey. We're glad you joined us. Be sure and download this week's info slip in order to have the note sheet for our Life Lesson series as we continue with our Experiencing God series this week. Thank you. God's Word according to 2 Timothy chapter 3 beginning with verse 16. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Today we're also looking at Romans chapter 8 beginning with verse 26. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. Scripture and prayer, they are full of God's power. And the only way that you or I are ever going to have an experience or an encounter with God is through God's powerful communication to us, uh, especially through the Word. And fortunately, I sometimes neglect God's Word. I don't spend the kind of time that I ought to. I don't prioritize my time around God. And consequently, I'm the one who suffers as well as his kingdom suffers as a result of my not doing that. So I want to be honest with God and ask for his forgiveness. I encourage you to do the same by praying the prayer which you see on your screen. O oh Lord, you want me to experience you every day. You want to talk to me, guide me, comfort me, but I fail to stop and listen to you. You want to equip me, to empower me, 
to inspire me, but I go on as if I already have everything I need. Forgive these sins, forgive all my sins. The Spirit indeed helps us in our every weakness, not just with prayer, but in helping us to believe these words from Jesus himself. Your sins are forgiven in the name and the power of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Let's rejoice in that forgiveness as we sing our next song. Hi, boys and girls. Maybe you've been to a baptism at Word of Life and you have heard me say, just as this baby needs physical food so that it can grow physically, this baby also will need spiritual food so that it can grow spiritually. And then I asked the parents and the sponsors, the godparents, to commit to making sure that this child grows spiritually by bringing them to church, um, 
and Sunday school, giving them a Bible, reading that Bible to them, helping them to grow. So we're going to learn a song today because it's part of our theme for today as well about what happens to you if you don't read your Bible and you forget to pray, if you neglect your Bible and if you forget to pray, and then what happens to you if you read your Bible and pray every day. So we're going to do it a couple times. Listen to it carefully the first time so you can sing along the second time. Neglect your Bible and forget to pray. Neglect your Bible and forget to pray. Neglect your Bible and forget to pray. And you'll shrink, shrink, shrink to three. Read your Bible and pray. So you'll shrink if you don't read your Bible and pray every day, but you'll grow if you read your Bible and pray every day. So this time you get to sing along. Neglect your Bible and forget to pray. Neglect your Bible and forget to pray. Neglect your Bible and forget to pray. And you'll shrink, shrink, shrink to three. So remember, read your Bible, pray every day, so you'll grow, grow, grow. All right, let's fold our hands and say a prayer. Repeat after me. Dear God, dear God, thank you, thank you for the Bible, for the Bible, and for the opportunity, and for the opportunity to talk to you, to talk to you in prayer, in prayer. Help me, help me to read my Bible, to read my Bible, and to pray every day, and to pray every day. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Hi, I'm Pastor Ken Mitchke, and today we're continuing our series, Experiencing God, and we are right in the middle. We're right in the, the really good meat part of the series as we talk about today how God speaks to us through word and prayer, through word and prayer. And of course, as I shared last week, God always speaks to us primarily through his word. And that's why it's a little shocking uh, to see this next um, survey result. In 2019, a Pew survey reported only 45% of Christians attend worship at least once a month. Only 45% of Christians attend worship at least once a month. Of those, only 12% ever read their Bibles. Only 12% ever read their Bibles. And that's a shame because how can we know the voice of God? How can we know that he's speaking to me? What is he saying to me? Um, how can we know God as um, a personal God? How can we know him personally? How can he become more real to us? Uh, well, God's word is going to tell us that. So it's important to hear God's word, to read God's word. Number one, God speaks to us primarily through his word. Number one, God primarily speaks to us through his word. 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17, all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. The Bible is God's word for us. The Bible is God's word for us. If God created us with the ability to communicate, then it also makes sense that he would communicate with us and that we would remember it and that he would communicate with us sooner rather than later and that we would not only remember it but preserve it and share it with others and that's what we have right here this is god's word from beginning to end it is a record of what he has revealed to us and what we need to know to know him and to have a better life here on this earth and eternal life with him in heaven. The Bible is our source of authority. The Bible is our source of authority. People these days add and subtract to God's word. In that, it's they're not doing anything new. It's been done uh, from the time that scripture was even written. People have always been adding and subtracting. These days, what do they add or subtract? Well, they might add their own ideas, their own agenda. They might add the ideas of a leader or of a movement. Uh, they might add their own laws or traditions, things that make them feel comfortable or that help give them identity. Um, those are the kinds of things that people typically add to God's word. What are the kinds of things that they take away from? They take away the things that don't quite fit with their ideas or with their morals or their sense of what is right and wrong. Uh, they take away parts that divide them from others or that uh, identify them and separate them from others. Uh, they leave out the parts that just don't fit our current ideas. Look, every word without subtracting a single one in this Bible is God's word. And every idea or prompting that comes um, in addition to God's word has to be scrutinized by this to make sure that it truly is in accordance with God's will and isn't contrary. We can't say it is God's word, but we can say this is not contrary to God's word, so it can be God's will. Scripture is the source and the norm of all of our teaching and all of our practice. It is the place where we go to receive it, and it's also the place we go to scrutinize everything else to make sure that it is in accordance with God's word. It is the sole authority that we have for knowing God and for knowing his creation and this life that he has given to us. The Bible is God's inspiration and power for us. It is our source for a more real and personal experience of God. The Bible is God's inspiration and power for us. It is our source for a more real and personal experience of God. God brings us into a relationship with him through the word. Uh, faith comes by hearing that word. 1 John 5, 13. 
I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. The fact that you and I can say that we have eternal life is only because we have God's word. The only way we can say Jesus is Lord is by the Holy Spirit working in us. And again, he doesn't do that just all by himself. He does it through the word of Jesus. He recalls it to mind. Uh, he leads us into all truth. It's all clearly written down. It is not available in other ancient religions, nor in new practices and in new ideas. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. How God speaks to us through the Bible. How does God speak to us through the Bible? First of all, I read the word of God. I read the word of God. Hopefully, uh, there are a lot of people who are missing out on an experience of God because they're missing out on reading God's word. The reason why they don't experience God every day is because they don't read God's word every day. The spirit reveals truth. How does God speak to us through the Bible? The spirit reveals truth. When the spirit reveals truth to us as we're reading scripture or hearing it preached, uh, that is the initial experience of the Holy Spirit, the initial encounter with God. Now there's more, and I'll tell you more about that in a moment. How does God speak to us through the Bible? Uh, when I adjust my life to his word, when I adjust my life to his word, um, that means adjusting our thinking, adjusting our plans. How God speaks to us through the Bible, I obey God at his prompting. I obey God at his prompting. So this is where it gets down to doing what God tells you to do. After you've adjusted your thinking and your plans, then you do what he asks you to do. And uh, this is the reason why some get so very little out of God's word is because they read it, but they never do obey it. They don't listen to it. And that Greek word that's translated listen also has that sense of obedience as well. I experience God at work in me. Another way that we uh, that God speaks to us through the Bible is I experience God at work in me. When we read God's word, we adjust our life, we um, obey God's word, then we experience God at work in us. And there we have the fuller encounter with God and we have his love, his joy, his peace, his hope and, and meaning and so much more. There are great blessings in experiencing God in this way. And it all starts with scripture. Number two, God also speaks to us as we pray. God also speaks to us as we pray. Romans 8, 26 through 27. In the same way, the spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray, but the spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. Prayer is a two-way fellowship and communication with God. Prayer is a two-way fellowship and communication with God. What God says in prayer is much more important than what we say. What God says in prayer is much more important than what we say. So here the big problem is we so often don't prioritize listening. We don't take time to listen. We may pray our little prayer and then hurry off to whatever it was that we were about to do or to turn on our television or look at our cell phone. We need more silent time, more quiet time to hear, to listen to what God has to say to us and then to run that again by scripture. Um, and also this time together that we spend with God, um, sometimes it's not so important that we say uh, what we say, but it's that time that we spend together, uh, just like lovers, you know, you just, you're a better person because you're hanging out with this, uh, with this person in God's case with God. When we pray, the spirit reminds us of God's word. When we pray, the spirit reminds us of God's word. As we noticed the other day, God guides us in all truth and he brings different verses to mind. And when those verses pop in our mind, especially if they're repeated in our mind, guess what? That's the Holy Spirit. That's the encounter with God. When we pray, the spirit helps us pray. When we pray, the spirit helps us pray. Many times, 
I don't know what to pray, but the Holy Spirit always does. And he always just sort of jumps in and takes over and, and says, okay, so this is what this guy is really trying to say. This is what he or she really needs. Um, and what if you pray something that's contrary to God's word? Again, the Holy Spirit takes over and he uh, says, uh, let's just strike that. And instead, let's let's say this instead. So uh, he, he's got that. So never worry about whether what you're asking for is contrary to God's word or not. Just pray it and let the Holy Spirit sort it out. And my contention is the more we pray that way, the more God changes us and helps us to pray more in accordance with his will. What if you pray for something that God already wants to give to you? Well, guess what? When that happens, he will always give you exactly what you asked for. So um, you will always receive it. What do I do when I finish praying? What do I do when I finish praying? Well, immediately look for his answer. Don't wait. Don't say, well, later on, I'll take a look around and see if he's answered that prayer. But start looking right away for the way that he answered that prayer. Often we get what we expect. And what do you think we get when we expect nothing? That's right. We get nothing. Um, believe that God will give you whatever is best for you. It may not always be what you ask for because we don't always pray in accordance with God's will. We don't always pray uh, what is best for us and for his kingdom. Uh, but he promises that he will give to us whatever is best for us and his kingdom. What do I do when I pray for one thing and get something else? What do I do when I pray for one thing and get something else? Uh, this reminds me of the story of the crippled man. You remember his friends uh, went up on top of the roof. They, they dug through the roof and lowered him, lowered his pallet down below. Um, and Jesus looked at him and said that he forgave him. Now, wait a minute. That's not what they were asking him to do. They were asking um, that his friend be healed of his disability. But Jesus instead offers him eternal healing, forever healing, healing of his spirit and soul, and, and ultimately his body uh, in eternity too. And then of course, he also offers him uh, the ability to walk as well and gives him um, a new ability. So that's just how Jesus often works. That's how the Holy Spirit often works. That's how God often works. He, he, oh, he seems to always, in the end, give us uh, more than we could ever think or ask. What do I do when my prayers don't seem to make it through the ceiling? What do I do when my prayers don't seem to make it through the ceiling? I don't know about you, but I have been in situations where I've prayed and prayed, and what I heard from God was silence. Nothing. It seemed for all the world that he had just forgotten about me, forgotten about the things I was praying about, forgotten about my loved ones, and all I heard was silence. So what do you do when that happens? Or why does it happen? Well, sometimes it happens because of unrepented sin. And, and so God is using his silence to help address and get, the, get your attention about those unrepentant sins. But there are many people in scripture who didn't have unrepented sins and their prayers didn't seem to be answered like Job's. Uh, Jesus had no sin whatsoever. And, uh, and of course, he ended up dying on the cross. He went through all kinds of pain and suffering. It's okay to ask why. Jesus asked, why have you forsaken me while he was on the cross? Just don't always expect an answer. Job didn't get an answer either when he asked that question. Jesus did not either. Uh, and so what do you do when you don't get an answer? When you just hear silence? Well, keep going back to God's word and to prayer. Just keep going back to God's word and prayer and keep asking him, Lord, what do you want me to learn from this? What do you want me to see beyond this? And he'll eventually tell you, maybe in heaven, um, but there, know that there is a reason why uh, he is silent. And, and part of that is to help you to grow in your trust for him. What do I do when God speaks to me in prayer? What do I do when God speaks to me in prayer? Well, rejoice. Uh, God is speaking to you. This is a big thing. And maybe even write it down. The God of the universe is communicating with you. Uh, maybe you should write some of that down. The God of the universe is telling you about himself and about his work. 
A visitor shared a copy of a letter that I want to now share with you. Dear friend, I just had to send a note to tell you how much I care about you. I saw you yesterday as you were talking with your friends. I waited all day hoping you would want to talk with me too. I gave you a sunset to close your day, a cool breeze to rest you, and I waited. You never came. It hurt me, but I still love you because I am your friend. I saw you sleeping last night and longed to touch your brow, so I spilled moonlight upon your face. Again, I waited, wanting to rush down so we could talk. I have so many gifts for you. You awoke and rushed off to work. My tears were in the rain. If you would only listen to me, I love you. My love for you is deeper than the ocean and bigger than the biggest need in your heart. Ask me, talk with me. Please don't forget me. I have so much to share with you. I have chosen you and I will wait because I love you. Your friend, Jesus. This would be a good week to take another walk with your heavenly father. Give praise and thanks to God. Read your Bible. Pay a special attention to the direction of the Holy Spirit and how he leads your prayers. Experience God in scripture and prayer. Experience God in scripture and in prayer. We go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we give you thanks for speaking your word to us, for giving us the sole authority in regard to you and life, for the power of your word to bring us into a relationship with you and to assure us of eternal life. We thank you for speaking to us as we pray, for recalling uh, to us your word, for helping us pray and letting us join you in your work as we pray. We thank you for healing Rick and Diane, for the gift of holy baptism for Henry Carl Schneider, for funds given to our Therefore Go Building Fund, for all the blessings and resources you've entrusted to our care, and your promise to multiply them to build a bigger heaven and better lives. We now ask that you would inspire and empower us to listen and read your word, to be guided and assured by your word, to listen to what you say in prayer, to look for how you answer prayer, to know there's a reason behind what we perceive as your silence, and to know that you're waiting to talk with us. We pray that you would bless missionary pastor Andy Whaley as he plants a congregation in downtown McKinney, that you would bless our government to provide justice and protection for the good of all people, that you would bless our leaders with your wisdom and guidance, that they would lead according to your will, that you would bless victims of hatred, persecution, violence, and disaster, that you would bless students, educators, and parents. We pray for sobriety for those who have addictions. We pray for volunteers for our Operation Backpack Ministry, that you would bless Carissa and Adam as they await the adoption of their son from Thailand. We pray for a healthy pregnancy and delivery for Stephen and Emily. We pray that you would bless and protect our deployed troops and their families, especially Stephen, Matthew, Isaac, Brandon, and Taylor. We pray for employment for Greg, Dennis, and Emily. We pray for the Molina and Pizarro families as they grieve a major change. We pray for the family and friends of Sam as they mourn his death. We pray for physical health and economic recovery. We pray that you would bless Cecilia and her family to heal Bob and Cheryl, Carrie, Jerry, Kathy, Clarion, Melody, Neil, Jean, Ray, Coleman, Hayden, Rick, Paul, Kathy, Dodd, Patty, Bethany, Bobby, Jill, William, Cheryl, Brianna, Sheldon, Jason, Cerise, Baby, Rylan, Aubrey, Joseph, Ruby, Forrest, Faith, Noel, Charlie, Marianne, Larry, Ginger, Mr. and Mrs. Scott, Greg, June, Phil, Jan, TJ, Rufus, Morgan, Chris, Bobby K, Bud, Emma, Riley, Lyle, and Mia. We pray that you would heal those battling cancer, especially Susan, Joan, Marsha, Lola, Greg, Carrie, Jennifer, Pastor Al, Elaine, Kathy, Jeanette, Destiny, Sarah, Jennifer, Starlin, Brandy, Adriana, Chuck, Joe, and that you would strengthen their families. We now pray that you would help those that we now name in our hearts and minds. Mm -hmm. 
and that you would open the hearts of people around us to the gospel and to open our ears, hands, and mouths to bless them and to share Jesus with them. We pray this all in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. I'm Patty Mitke. Thank you for joining us for worship today. We're excited. It's time to come back to in-person worship. 
We'll be doing that starting next Sunday, the 20th of September. Now here's what's different. We'll be meeting at one time, 9.30. That's the only service we're gonna have on Sunday. We're also gonna ask that you wear masks or face coverings and that you observe social distancing. Let's be safe as we gather back together. If you don't feel ready to come back, that's okay. We will be live streaming the service too, so you can join us at 9.30 and just watch along with us from the comfort of your own home. Or if you're not able to participate at that time, you can join us in the afternoon and watch a recording of the service. Additionally, we will have our, we're continuing with our Experiencing God Bible Study. It will meet at the sanctuary after church. So again, at our, our normal time, our 1045 time, and we are looking at ways to be able to involve people virtually in that as well. So if you need that uh, experience, please let Pastor Ken know. Otherwise, we'll just meet in the sanctuary in person for that Bible study time. Also on the 20th is a meeting for confirmation parents. So if your child is going to be part of confirmation this year, this is a parents only meeting that'll be at six o'clock in the sanctuary on Sunday the 20th. Again, wear your mask, we'll be socially distancing. This is for parents of children who are new to confirmation and those who are returning. So be sure and join us parents so that you can get all the lowdown on when confirmation will begin this year. Finally, we've been telling you about the need for volunteers for our backpack program. We still need some more volunteers. We have up to 13 uh, students that we can help and assist, and several of our volunteers are doubling up right now, taking more than one child. And that works, but it's not ideal. So if you can help with this, please read the announcements and get the details, and then let Margie Dominguez know that you're ready and willing to assist. And again, we'll see you on the 20th.